Well, if you didn't think buying one wrecked GT3 was enough, we bought two. So welcome to our parts car. So this is also a 992 GT3, and as you can see, it was crashed in the rear. And we're gonna have a hell of a time trying to unload it because we're in the middle of rush hour and we got a lot of traffic. So we're gonna try to get a buddy with a forklift and he's going to lift this thing off. The truck's gonna drive away and then hopefully we'll be able to put it into our shop and then start taking it apart. So let's see how this goes. We're gonna film the whole thing. <laughs> so let's give it a shot. GT3 number two, next to GT3 number one. So conveniently, this guy looks pretty good from this angle. Front's okay. It's got four wheels. Carbons look good. But then you get around to the back and it looks like it got customized by a tree in the back here. In fact, you can actually still see the tree bark in the rear of the car. So this came from Florida and another Copart find. You can see the rear fender. The goal of this guy is to take the front. So we got hood, we got fenders, we got lights, we got fascia, we got cooling packs, suspension, pretty much everything we need to finish our project GT3. And so you might ask, well, why don't you use the front structure off this? Well, after removing the one from that car, find out how much you really can't reuse these. So we ordered a brand new one. But now, we just got this thing, put it up on the lift, and we're gonna check out what's underneath. To show you guys the spec, this is a pretty base spec. So it does have buckets, which is nice, and it's got nice inserts. It's PDK though, it has nose lift, and that's about it. So no extended leather, no real custom details, uh, I like the white though, the stitching, the chalk stitching is good. Chalk is a good color. Wish it had a carbon roof, but oh well. So now, let's put it up in the air and let's see what we got. Got it up in the air and now we can take a better look. So, got pretty hosed in the rear. <laughs> There's more bark. Here are the exhaust tips, by the way. So, comment below and perhaps the best comment, I might take those off and just send them out to a subscriber because that's hilarious. See some damage in the engine here. This is a water pipe. But hopefully underneath, it might not be too bad. But what I really care about is, as you can see, let's turn this sideways. The suspension looks all right. We've got some scrapes underneath, which almost surely, because you can see where the fork came from Copart, our friends. There's one there. And then there's the other one. So they just really don't care about cars that they pick up. And here's another fork scrape. So that's really frustrating. But if we go to the front of the car, it still has all of the aero ducting underneath. It's got the brake ducting here. Carbon ceramics look good. Suspension looks good. 
nothing really going on up here that I can see, which is nice. We've got good in the front end. Looks like this was hit, I'm guessing again, from our friends at Copart. But otherwise, the radiator packs, everything looks to be intact. There's some, some junk in there. You can kind of see, it's hard to see in the back, but oh, there you go. Nice little protein snack. And then even the tires look all right. The wheels are fine. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start, just because we're really curious, is we're gonna take off these covers and we're gonna take a look at the engine. Let's just see how bad it is, if it's salvageable. Get a look at the subframe in the back and really see where we are, because it looks like the front's fine. Uh, and then we'll start disassembling it so we can put it into the new GT3. So let's get going. We got the back end mostly taken off, so let's take a quick look at the engine here. On the surface, it doesn't look too bad. We can see the crash bar got into the alternator and some of the hoses, but it looks like the exhaust took most of the damage. So from the top, it looks like this engine may be salvageable. Now, I bought this knowing most likely, given how far in the tree went, that the engine was probably not gonna be any good. But from the top, it looks okay. So let's take a look underneath, though. Closer look underneath the reels a bit more damaged. So we got some cracked water pipes. You can see one split off here. And so you're thinking, okay, insulator systems, a little bit of damage, but you can kind of see where the exhaust went into the engine. Then I noticed so there's actually a crack in the head right here. So you can see the head actually split, which is super unfortunate because otherwise some of these bolt-on parts could just be replaced, but it looks like we need a new head. So the engine as it sits probably won't run. Well, it's not going to run, but we could maybe fix it. And so we've been debating, you know, finding a head, if we can just pop this off or we might just sell it as is if somebody wants to build it into like a race engine or something like that. So if we look forward now to the gearbox, I notice a lot of oil here and this is where the PDK lives. So it is completely destroyed, the housing at least. So not sure how it looks underneath. Maybe we can salvage the actual gearbox because this is the main actuator unit for the PDK. So it might be still okay under there, but we wouldn't know without taking it apart. Uh, but the body structure though is done. So you can see here, it's just opened up where the fender joins, there's more damage and bending uh, it's all bent underneath, so the floor pan, everything is kind of pushed forward. And if you get inside, you can see where the gearbox actually shoved into the back of the car. So some might think you could repair this. Oh, there's also, there's cracks in the casting. You see where it's pulling away. The whole rear crash structure is pushed in. Everything is, is technically repairable, but because of the damage to the actual structure of the vehicle, I would not repair this. 
this is too, too far gone. And even if you pull it out, and you can see here there's more, even if you pull it out and straighten it, you've reduced the integrity of the vehicle. And I just wouldn't say it's safe anymore in case something happens. So this one's gone, but we knew that and when we bought it because we weren't really anticipating the engine being any good. Mostly, I just wanted it for the parts in the front. All right, we got one stripped out GT3. So we've left some of the components in here because I don't need them right now. So kind of storage, but we took out the front and we took out the dash because I need the airbags and kind of a bunch of ancillary systems to the dash. I had to take out the rear because we had to drop the rear subframe, which obviously has the shocks that's attached inside. And I realized I forgot to film dropping the rear subframe, but I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So here's as it sits and of course, racks of parts. So I've stored all the parts, bin them, and there's actually some in the back. So we've got doors, we've got interior bits, we've got hoses, trim pieces. I photographed and bagged and tagged everything so that we can put this guy back together on the new car. 
pretty excited to finally have parts that I need. There's a few other things that we're gonna need to get from Porsche, but a lot of little stuff, like all these brackets and clips and all these silly things were not on the other car. And so now we have them and we know where they go, we know how they mount, because the front of this thing is basically untouched other than some very light damage uh, to the front lower lip. So even the side skirts here, the vents, everything's in good shape. All of the air conditioning lines, of course the hood is in good shape. This hood is basically untouched. So that's great because our hood had a little bit of damage on it uh, and we have the nice battery. So we've got the lithium ion battery in this car. So all in all, this has been a pretty good buy and the windshield's still good. So it could probably reuse this windshield as well. So we'll have to take that out carefully, see if we can get into the new car. So I realized I forgot to show removing the rear subframe, but here is the front and rear subframe of our Chalk GT3. So the front's right here, and actually it's in very good condition. There's a little bit of corrosion here because I think it got wet when the car was sitting at Copart, but otherwise, it's great. The ceramics are good, brakes are good, steering rack's fine. Even the rear suspension, which is back here, isn't bad. So overall, it was pretty good on the car because the impact hit the engine. We do see a little bit of damage to the subframe here, but I think the one on our car that we got, which is actually right here, is generally better. So I didn't see any major damage. There's like a scuff mark on it. So this is all of the parts from the two cars. Got it outside here just because things are getting a little crowded inside. We've got the fuel tank, which is in great shape. It's very easy to remove. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically take parts from all these different suspensions and build one solid car. And then of course, everything else that we don't need, we're gonna be selling off. So there's a lot of good parts here. It's pretty excited to get going. But next, we're gonna be putting on the front of our GT3 before we can get to the fun stuff like suspension. So I wanted to show you guys this, kind of where we sit and things are looking good. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. Made a ton of progress, disassembled this entire other parts car, got everything we need, got it stored over here. So we're ready to go to start putting parts on our new GT3 once we get that front end installed. So if you haven't already, click that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, so we've got new videos coming every week.